Good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's um, Pace and Economic Development Committee. Um, welcome to today's meeting. This is a public meeting, and members of the public and press are permitted to report on the proceedings. Reporting includes filming, photography, making an audio recording, and providing commentary on proceedings. Please note, this meeting is recorded and streamed live. These recordings are published on the relevant meetings page of the, of the Council's website. By choosing to attend this public meeting, you are deemed to have given your consent to being filmed or recorded and for any footage to be broadcast or published. If the alarm sounds, the premise must be evacuated immediately. Do not spend time collecting personal belongings. And all emergency escape routes are clearly signed. And once you've left the building, the assembly point is in the high street opposite the Guildhall. Members and other speakers are reminded to use their microphones when speaking. Um, we have a number of um, officers who are um, going to be um, on Zoom. I think Sean, Corin, and Becky are going to be on Zoom in their relevant um, um, items. And I'd like to introduce. The, the um the sorry Jane. The, the name Zoe yes Zoe the new head of uh, planning so Zoe can I, perhaps you'd introduce yourself Right. So we have appointments of substitutes. There are no substitutes, Chair. And declarations of interest. Um, Jim? Chair, just out of courtesy, I may be jumping a gun a bit, but on first I'll be hosting a uh, residence, meeting with residents with regards to a plan and Jubilee pop street party, just early discussion. So it's probably right, it's on the agenda that we'll, but I, I Declaration okay. of interest. Lovely. And do we have any public public participation? There's so, none, Chair. No. So the minutes. So the minutes from the first of November. Um, page one. Page two. Page three. Page four. And page five. Your great okay. So right. So um, number five is additional funding to celebrate the Queen's Jubilee. So Helen's uh, the recommendation is that the committee recommends to the Policy and Resources Committee to approve the award of an additional twenty thousand pounds from reserves in twenty twenty two twenty three be used to fund activities to celebrate the Queen's Jubilee in 2022. Um, so as you'll know, in June 22, um, Her Majesty the Queen will become the first British monarch to celebrate 70 years of the throne, um, Platinum Jubilee. An announcement was made to extend the bank holiday weekend from Thursday the 2nd to Sunday the 5th of June 2022 to provide opportunities for communities throughout the UK to come together to celebrate the historic milestone. As Council, we'd like to take the opportunity to join the rest of the UK to celebrate the occasion. So we will take the opportunity to encourage the whole community to participate in the June. You'll recall that in November 21, the committee agreed to recommend an allocation of £10,000 for activity. And um, this report, an additional £20,000, bring the total to £30,000, which makes um, an appropriate amount um, to celebrate. So activities which we have planned, um, we have a beacon lighting event in Fort Royal Park on the 2nd of June. That's part of the National Beacon Lighting. 
joining us up with places around the country. Um, there's tree planting as part of the Queen's Green Canopy. Uh, inviting, they've invited people from across the UK to plant a tree for the Jubilee. Um, we will be encouraging businesses to get involved. We're looking at window displays, potentially offers, um, certainly decorations. For the um, and we are um, creating a programme of content for social media, highlighting many historic links to the royal family. Um, additional funding is also rec uh, requested to further support and enhance those activities. Um, so we're looking to encourage participation in the big Jubilee lunch, where um, communities can come together over the bank holiday and to celebrate their connections and get to know each other better. We'd like to encourage street parties to take place during the June period. Um, so this funding will be used to put in place a small grant for that funding to encourage their street parties. Um, we want to put in place a small grant scheme for community groups who wish for events to celebrate the June. We'd like to put street decorations and activations across the city and um, we will be um, working with the to uh, promote and uh, support the ex events and exhibitions that they have taking place. And there will also be events and guild hall programmes just at the moment. It's also worth noting that the Algar Festival will take place over that weekend, um, as the Thursday, the 2nd of June, is Algar's birthday. So I'd like to really shout about how special that will be. Um, so, as you'd expect, the preferred options to fund those activities from reserves in the um, proposal. Um, and the alternative op option would be to not fund those activities. However, uh, celebrate um, historic weekend. Thanks. Um, just, um, I mean, that's uh, thirty thousand now altogether, isn't it? Um, the, um, I mean, the. the what indication do we have that that, is, um, that amount of money is going to be taken up by local groups? What's our experience of similar activities, for example, on the last time there was a, a royal celebration um, a few years ago? Um, thanks. The, um, I'm not actually aware of what we did the last time there was a royal celebration, because it's slightly before my time, but um, having uh, worked with the community engagement team, they've recently some um, street party funding and they've had um, between I think eight the last time I checked street parties um, that have been booked through that so we can anticipate more as this is a, a sort of higher profile event and um, so we've we've put a rough budget of about 15 that be about 15 um, the small funding pot for the community groups um, we're looking at between 1500 and two and a half thousand pounds per pot depending on the event um, so we would think that that probably would be part of 10, 000, 30. Um, and the rest of the funding will be for street decorations. There's no budget set for that yet. Um, window decorations and um, and the community events that we have. So we've still got quite a bit of work to do to, to formulate the plan. Um, it's very early days on that at the moment. I'll just ask then, Chair, is that, are we, <laughs> Are we leading, driving, or are we um, facilitating other people to do? Yes, we're enhancing um, and encouraging other to, to put the events on. We'd like to promote that by offering this funding. Um, James. Uh, Chair, thank you. Um, I touched on, on the, the, the point I was going to raise in your answer to Adrian's question, um, but a little bit more, if, if you can, about the, the small grant scheme. You, you mentioned the, the overall figure, but are we looking at uh, essentially a, a way of subdividing that within uh, applications prior to the application, or are we, because ultimately we could simply, uh, you know, exhaust that pot, um, you know, how, how is it going to be structured, essentially, to, to, to sort of make sure that th th those funds are available across the, the city? Good question. We're, it's really important to us that this is funding and that it's uh, the only chosen few. Um, so the funding criteria we're going to use uh, that the team 
um, and that makes it uh, there's, it means there's a process for how we award it and there's a, a structure to that so it's um fair and equitable and we um you know, it's subject to getting the approval at this meeting we'll start promoting that quite widely to make sure that as many people as Thank you, Chair. It's just really to speak in favour of this, this item. I think it's a, a very sensible move to put this additional funding in place because I think it will be a very popular milestone in the, the life of the nation. To celebrate. We'll come together as we be able to mark this way, I think. It's all this funding will get taken up by community just to echo good information available and streamline it if you are community minded however that's called a range of um, various authorities Uh, as easy as possible. Um, oh, sorry. Um, thank you, Chair. Has any thought been put in? So, so the city of centre events that are going to take has any thought been put into? Um, enabling access to the to those people who don't necessarily drive car bicycle okay. yeah i think the um the, most of the events will be um community based center focus um when we when we support organizers events on about accessible and and give them best practice and Good, good guidance on the type of things that they need to think about as event. That would be that. Karen. Great way of making it safe for people. It's just an observation, obviously reminding colleagues, I don't need to remind us all week, you know, we, we've, we're lucky enough to represent, and honoured enough to represent the faithful city. So I think if we can lead by example here, it would be interesting to see, it, you know, how our street parties go. And I'm really encouraged by what you were saying about, you know, access across the city. It would be one of my concerns initially was it was going to be very much sort of just maybe a couple of wards to get hold of it. But if we can see this right away across the faithful city, it's, it's going to be, be a celebration like, you know, I doubt we'll, we'll, ever, we'll, we'll ever see another monarch to, to reign as long as Her Majesty has, and it's quite a milestone. The recommendation is that the committee recommend to the Policy and Resources Committee to approve the awarding of an, of an additional £20,000 from reserves in 2022-23 to be used for funding activities to celebrate the Queen's Jubilee. Oh, Jubilee, yes. So we have a vote. Yes. Yeah. Alan, and yours next as well. Review of Christmas in Worcester and um, the recommendations um, that the committee notes the review of the report into the Worcester activity. Um, the committee agrees to officers exploring the options for extending the existing Christmas lights coverage to other parts of the city with recommendations to be reported to a future committee. And that the committee agrees to officers conducting a review of opportunities relating to Christmas activities to review report to a future committee. So this report will summarise um, Christmas activities in 22, um, which were um, Christmas illuminations, Christmas light switch on, Victorian Christmas fair, Christmas gifts market, and the free parking offer at 3 p.m. Um, the other activities that were carried out were, um, were that we uh, 
worked in partnership with Worcester Bid to get a promotional campaign coordinated um, by the two organisations and funded through the Welcome Back. The campaign included social media adverts in several local, uh, social media adverts, um, online and print coverage in local newspapers, and um, adverts on the radio. The Visit Worcester site also contained a comprehensive feature on activity, um, including things like the Father Christmas installation at Crowngate um, and events at the Commandery and other partners. So, starting with the review of the Christmas illuminations, um, this year we worked with a new Christmas um, lights contractor, Light Limited, um, and they're working with us until 2024. Um, Light were commissioned to work with the existing lights infrastructure and to design a scheme which was attractive and suited the layout of the city, whilst remaining within budget, which was £39,000. So light installed in the city centre cross street decorations, um, lamppost lights in Cathedral Square, um, and they decorated existing trees on Broad Street and the High Street. They put in place a 35 foot Christmas tree, um, which was installed by the council's tree team and decorated by light, and um, two eight foot trees outside the Guild Hall. Um, and this year, as well, for the first time, the bid installed infrastructure and light crossing Street and Friar Street. Um, so in St John's, as in previous years, 24 small decorated trees were installed above shops and businesses. New Road Roundabout had traditionally had a 35-foot tree installed, on the, um, but there were frequent instances of vandalism and wind damage. And this year, we installed a large style illumination about and decorated a pre-existing tree with lights. Um, under direction of the leader of the council, um, in early December, the star was removed and a new 35 Christmas foot Christmas tree was installed in its place. The new decorations were in place by Friday the 10th of December at an additional cost. So feedback about the lights in the city centre was really positive this year. Um, lots and lots of people sent us lots of messages saying how beautiful they looked. Um, the displays were bright, they stretched across the whole of the high street, they sort of ticked a lot of the boxes of what we were looking for. Um, the St John's shop front Christmas trees um, didn't quite meet our expectations. They were new in 2018, we understood that they would have been okay this year and they weren't quite as bright as we would have liked. Um, and the feedback on the new road roundabout I've discussed already, feedback. Um, so city centre lights have been installed in those locations um, based on existing infrastructure in the city, um, like lamp columns, tree sockets, eye bolts in the, in the walls of the buildings. Um, but each year we sort of lose an eye bolt here and there or the light infrastructure changes. Um, it also doesn't provide full coverage of every street in the city, and we've talked about this again. Yeah. Um, so for example, we don't currently um, or Angel Street. Um, it wouldn't be possible to light those areas within the existing budget. Um, and it should also be noted at this point that new areas of the city, i.e. those under regeneration, like the arches, um, don't have an existing light budget. Um, so they wouldn't, they wouldn't, as it stands, have lights. Um, so the recommendation is for officers to explore options about how much it would cost effectively to extend the lights coverage um, and we should also include the opportunity to seek private sector funding partnership and sponsorship within that review as well. Um, once the review is complete we'll present, I will present this report back to you um, for, for review. That's the first section. So Christmas light switch on. Um, previous years we've run the Christmas light switch on on a Thursday evening and you'll remember that for this committee um, it went really well everybody was all the positive response all the feedback that we received was extremely positive about that. The businesses reported good footfall in the afternoon um, and the event was generally well received. It was organised by the tourism and events team, Youthcom Radio, um, Worcester Bid, Crowgate Shopping Centre and Cathedral Square. So a really good sort of city centre partnership event attended by thousands of people. Um, Worcester Victorian Fair. So um, thanks to the committee, we reported um, at this meeting four times last year. Um, of updating you on the progress of the event and how it's going. Um, as you'll know, we reviewed the layout of the fair to address concerns about large crowds and um, organisers reduced the number. We worked throughout the year on multiple plans to account for and we worked very closely with local businesses as well. Um, so again, feedback received by organisers or on the fair social media has been pretty much constantly positive about the event. Um, particularly positive comments were received about the layout of the stalls and the atmosphere of the event. Um, some feedback was received about visitors to, um, to the fair. Um, 
um, but it should be noted that we followed all of the government guidelines in place and we weren't in a position to tell people to work. No requirement for that. Um, and there were also no government guidelines indicating that the um, positive feedback was also received about the entertainment at the event um, and we highlight some of the new talk about Scrooge, um, talk about Sherlock Holmes and Dr Watson characters, so lots of Victorian themed entertainment in and Gin Lane also returned for its seventh year. Um, in terms of the review, uh, we've worked with suppliers, stallholders, businesses to get feedback from them about how it went. Um, we, we understand that the layout of the event worked well, so we intend to keep that layout in the future. And we will, in, we will review options for including stalls in the Shambles Broad Street. The contract for the delivery of the market operations is due for renewal this year, um, and we will be procuring that through a competitive tendering process and going out in weeks. And that procurement will obviously consider any lessons learned from this year as well. Um, and in 2022, the overall cost to the Council of the Victorian Fair was £40,000. Um, this includes a reduction of income of £10,000 due to the reduced number of stalls and the change layout. Um, it also includes the circa £30,000 cost of installation of barriers. In terms of recommendation, um, approximately 125,000 people attend the fair each year, um, and this presents an opportunity to generate income through sponsorship. Indeed, this was raised at these as well. Um, so we recommend that we would conduct a review of income generation opportunities, both at the fair, but also for the wider Christmas and program um, subject to agreement when we carried out this review we'll bring it to um, income generation at this committee in terms of the Worcester Christmas gifts market um, we put 24 wooden chalets on the high street throughout December um, we are still carrying out the that went come back to you with um, and with the car parking offer um, limited amount of feedback that we can give you in terms of um, figures because the point of the offer was that people buy a ticket so there was up um, but the um, the team have anecdotally reported a large number of um, so the preferred option is for us to explore the options for extending the christmas lights coverage um, and stations and also explore um, opportunities relating to christmas terms of income generation. Question. Um, certainly the um, switching of the uh, Christmas lights was a re really good event. Um, it was uh, obviously the, the mayor, I accompanied the mayor um, with the event and there was a really, really good crowd, even though it was bitterly cold. And also, um, I thought that the, um, the lights around um, New Street and Fire Street were particularly beautiful. And um, ho let's hope they, they uh, can uh, be well received for many years. So, good question. Thank you. Um, thank you, Helen, for this report. Very thorough very complete and a very successful Christmas for Worcester, I think. Um, the, the lights, the Victorian fair, switching on of the Christmas lights uh, and the new idea of the wooden chalets, I think they were all very successful. And I think Worcester and Worcester traders will have done well uh, from um, the number of people that came into the city. There was a real, I think the expressions used before, there was a real appetite. Um, my only comment is uh, the lights were beautiful. They cost £39,000, which was within the budget um, that we'd set ourselves for the previous year. And then the extra Christmas tree is another 5000 uh, 5320 for the Christmas tree on the new road roundabout. So we're up to 44000 I'm just a little bit concerned that we don't get carried away with how wonderful the lights were and all the extra places that we could put them um, and start um, sort of increasing that budget by a huge amount. Although the lights are beautiful, they are only there for about six weeks a year. And there are, everybody knows how tight our budget is. 
and how there are so many calls on our finance. So I think the idea of looking for private sector funding and sponsorship is really important here. Because if we do want to pay more than £44,000 at Christmas time in order to light our city, I do think that some of the people who benefit from that, such as private sector sponsors, should be encouraged to pay something towards the extra money that would be needed. Um, James. Uh, Chair, thank you. Um, I guess the, the, the one point I wanted to try and tease out a little bit more about was you, you mentioned the encouraging feedback you've been getting from local businesses in terms of the relationship between them and the stores and so forth. I wonder what sort of um, like data or anecdotal stuff we have that might, where that direction of travel has been going on that over the years, whether it's actually getting better. Uh, uh, and another thing, if I may, that I, I get Joe's point. I, I fully appreciate that. I guess the, the, the difficulty with, with enticing private money into an event, essentially, is, is to, it's a chicken and egg thing, essentially, isn't it? You know, if, if what you're offering entices them in, then they might be more encouraged to actually come in. On the other hand, if we're trying to get them in to, to be part of that building process, certain parts of the city. Perhaps that encouragement isn't there quite at the moment. Um, I mean, that's probably a conversation for income generation on another day. But, uh, you know, just to have that balance to that, that discussion, I think, is quite useful. But particularly about the generation, the, the direction of travel in terms of where, what we've got at the moment. Um, I've, uh, I've been working on the burnout for one year, and I think every year we've, we've learned a bit more about how to, to support the businesses more and um, the last time we carried out then the generators the economy um, so we sort of know the numbers are there but i think it very much depends on the type of business um, that you know and who will benefit from that. so sort of see our role at the council as um we're sort of the conduit between the the market operator and the businesses make sure that Businesses are there all year round. We can't just kind of get them for that one weekend of the year. They they have to be sort of priority list when it comes to that. And we also have to put a safe and, and comfortable and, and working event on as well. Um, so we will make sure that we communicate with the business from, from the very early stages, and um, certainly to let them know about the date for you know sort of now ish. Um, we'll make sure that they're comfortable with how they can get deliveries in and out. We'll we'll bend over backwards to make sure they can get their deliveries in and out. Um, we'll locate stalls outside um, shops. So, you know, we, I'd give you the example, you know, we, we wouldn't put um, a, a stall selling sweets outside Mr. Sim's sweet shop, for example. It just, things like that. Um, so, all of those things we've, we've kind of learned over the years. And, and I, think, I think the key thing is for us is having that communication between to make sure that they're really comfortable, that if they have got a question or a problem, they know who to come to. And it's me and my team. We'll respond to them and, and we'll make it work for them. And in terms of direction of travel, we'll, we'll keep doing that and we'll do more of that. We can't have too much communication. We send them two written newsletters as well in, in the events for that very reason. Um, I'll answer your question about, um, or I'll answer your comment about um, the sponsorship and, and engagement. I think that's what the review will pick up. I think exactly how we balance that because we've also got an obligation not to over commit event because if it's not in the right balance so we've absolutely got that. Thanks. Um, Chair, firstly just to if covering off the early part of the year so look at that otherwise I welcome review into I do think lighting Back to the city. Hopefully, we generate parts of the city. I do think really, obviously. 
well combined. But you also make the point overwhelming that part of that that we can make sure other parts understanding the problems of the same Christmas feel hopefully will well in terms of the lighting you right good addition I think by the bid different ways things which will feel are well worth looking at with an eye to the future, there are parts of the to go. Um, I think it would be what I'm really glad. Best I know other, other cities, the places in the UK, places in Bath, where you pull back and have And as actually the city we press ahead, I welcome the review. Uh, may I just respond? I think um, to pick up your point about uh, continuing to press ahead, um, the, the feedback that I had from business, from traders was that it was very much based on the under. That enabled. Um, thanks. So I agree that it um, certainly uh, came, came across as a, a successful Christmas for, as far as the city is concerned as a whole. Um, I think the point about the review is, it, is, is really that we need to recognise it was an unusual year, um, it, in part because um, we, went, we decided that we were going to go ahead uh, with the activities. Um, in you know, there's okay. There's an appetite for Christmas, as Joe says, but on the other hand, there was also a lot of COVID issues around that, and so I think it would be dangerous to use it as a as a a, a clear guide as to what might happen. It is, um, but having said that, you know, the, I'm sure the review will pull out those elements that are um, those kind of caveats. Um, I was particularly interested in the um, just the, the note that you'd made about how much it cost. Um, you say in five seven uh, the overall cost was forty thousand, but that forty thousand included a reduction of ten thousand, and also the barriers cost thirty thousand. And I, my my head, that means that it didn't cost us anything. That those two, the forty thousand that it cost was kind of was balanced out by that other forty thousand. I wasn't totally clear what you were trying to say in the figures, um, especially because when if that is the case, it's not. It, it's already cost us thirty nine thousand because of the lights. Um, so I wasn't totally clear how those figures worked through. The other thing I just wanted to highlight really was the car parking offer. Um, I mean, it, it, it's, um, it strikes me that when we, the reason for advertising um, free car parking, for implementing free car parking, is to try and encourage more people to come into the city and to use our facilities and to use the, the, the shops and whatever. Um, this time of year is a period when people do that. Uh, and um, so, we, we've actually passed up an opportunity to um, redress some of our income that we've lost over the last two years through the COVID pandemic and the reduction in car park income as a result. And we all know how important car park income has to be to um, everything else um, in the city. So I just wonder whether we ought to review before rushing headlong into um, free car parking every day. In the future, we ought to review that situation. Um, and understand how best we do it. In the past, we used to have a free parking offer 
but on a Thursday night, the was the late night shopping. Um, but we didn't do it any of the other time. And I think there is a there is a question over what is the best balance to do that. Uh, so perhaps um, in, in terms of your calculations of income and expenditure, I think whatever we've lost on car park income perhaps ought to be taken into account. Um, I do agree with the looking at the other areas, particularly the arches and also Sidbury, perhaps, because of the welcome entrance. Thank you. Um, the point about the, the budget in 5.7, um, that's just the cost of the Christmas fair. That doesn't include any of um, So I think we yeah, treat that separately. So 39k cost of full. And, and absolutely, I'll take on board your comment about the depth review. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think I'm going to be rather interested in the review in what individual businesses thought and how they benefited. The bid will be helpful for us to understand that. One of the reasons for that was I noted that many of the food outlets, cafes and restaurants in the city, benefited quite a bit from the crowds that there are. But um, Marks and Spencer was absolutely empty for several days because <laughs> I was in there at different times of day and they were quite hard hit by it. Uh, their revenue must have been, you know, rock bottom. I couldn't actually get up to some of the shops I wanted to visit at the top end of the high street because the crowds were so dense. And, uh, you know, I wanted to get into, say, Hotel Chocolat and couldn't because it was just impossible to get near the door. At that, at that time, I knew that there was almost no one in there. There may have been somebody upstairs, but I couldn't see customers in there. So I think that we may find a mixed picture. And I'd be interested to know what that picture is. Um, Jim. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I really just want to pick up on Simon's points and Adrian's points as well. Um, obviously, I'm hoping, and I know there will be a degree of the sort of open mindedness with regards to expansion of the lights. And I, and I hear what Joe was saying with regards to costings. And of course, that, that is very important. But having invested as a city so much in, say, the Arches, for example, to me, it would be remiss not to sort of use that, you know, with all that's hoping is going to happen with the Archie's sites, um, to use that as an opportunity to actually have Christmas lights there. And I think in time, and it, it, you know, we're not going to get a quick fix because obviously, as Adrian's pointed out, circumstances change every year, um, more so the last couple of years. But I would hope that in time, if there is success with Christmas lights at the Archie's, that could also be expanded to the tithing because. From my point, just by spending money in the arches doesn't mean to say we, ne we, then we neglect everywhere else. And I would hope in time that that would expand and encourage people to, sh to shop more in the tithing and indeed at the other town at Sidbury by making the correct investment. So I see it very much, you know, what I don't want to do, I'll, the way the city's expanding, if investment's gone into it, I don't think that means we should be writing off the the quieter, shall we say, in quote, shopping areas on the edge on the edge of the of, of the busier parts. As the city expands, as we're becoming, you know, we're be, we're encouraging people to to walk more and more. People will hopefully start actually walking more and more when they're shopping and actually making these shop commercial areas on on the fringes, if you like, far more part of the of the greater shopping experience in Worcester. No. Um, Karen. Um, a few things. I thought the fair was at. I, I, when I went there, that crowd, I really liked the fact that the, the, the places were a little bit more further apart. Um, I talked to a few storeholders. Uh, Fluffle holder had run out of Bailey's Fluffle by some. The lady who was making the little face cleaners, she was up all night Friday. So she 
So I think you're going to get some fabulous. Um, I think that it connects with the trend in retail very much. I have great confidence in this as a few people because people are moving away from big retail. It's less attractive after experience. The fact that you've got these people dressing up and you're creating this atmosphere, I think you're absolutely going on. Um, I would like, as part of your review, not just to look at the thing, uh, but to look at uh, whether we can put on some, fun, whether we can do for cyclists, for pedestrians, just the whole package of how people reach there. Um, I know that other cities have done some things over free for a weekend, something we can do to not just benefit only um, but really I'd just like congratulations because I think after the whole of COVID last year to put on something so well received. Thank you Chair. Um, um, thank you for the report Helen, brilliant. Uh, of course I echo Councillor Geraghty's remarks on the side of the, that the Christmas tree was most welcome. I can't say that I was underwhelmed by any of the lights because I was shielding at the time. So I didn't get out to see them. Um, Councillor Lewin has covered a point that I wanted to make about car parking and expanding that out to other options of travel because it's you know, there are people who don't drive. The other thing that struck me in the review for lighting um, is it going to be conf is it going to be confined to what I would call the agents or Tithing, other places like that. Are we? Are, will the review take in other shopping areas within the city? So I know none of got shopping precincts, and are those being taken into? Well, it's part of the review. I think in answer to that, um, my my sort of thinking for the review would be that we would look at it shopping list, and um, so you know we'll look at how much it would cost to do this area how much and then we could almost take each area but on a case by case basis um it's certainly possible those neighbors within that um and then just to provide the information i'm aware that wouldn't be a problem thank you We come to the, the, the recommendations. Um, I'd also like to commend the um, the actual um, stalls. I know that um, I spoke to the um, um, the markets um, provider, and it was I was really impressed with the way that how the stalls were able to be put away at night um, and locked, rather than each t each day dismantle the stores and everything else and I think it was a really really good thing um, so the recommendations that we note the review that um, we agree to offices exploring the options to extending the existing Christmas light coverages to other parts of the city with recommendations reported to future committee meeting and that um, the uh, committee agrees to offices conducting a review opportunities relating to Christmas activities and also um, the, um, uh, um, the income generation as well and um, again to report back to, to a further committee. So do we have uh, everyone in favour? So, um, Shane, setting the budget. Thank you, Chair. Evening, members. This is the uh, third stage, and uh, for this committee, the final stage of the budget setting for the for the year. And we obviously have two items to go. One is to uh, consider any recommendations from the committee at policy and resources, and then those will then be passed through to council at the end of the uh, end of February. Um, this report uh, brings together. Proposals that we've had to date, as also the underlying revenue budgets for the, which are in the remit of the committee, the, those uh, 
The revenue budget is set out in Appendix 1, and uh, members will see that there's, in general, around about £230,000 increase from the previous year. Most of that is around salaries. Some of it will be due to the, to the normal um, incremental increases uh, are expected rise in salary and national insurance and so on. But also there's been a process of restructuring around um, planning and economic development, as members will be aware. And we're now seeing that sort of starting to work their way through. I'm aware that there are more um, items posed around uh, staff changes within those areas, and there'll be future reports of those. But the, I think the budget is pretty robust. Uh, it's my, my re requirement as a Section 151 officer to make that determination, and I would suggest that the budget there is about as it should be. Uh, uh, we also need to consider any changes to the income and efficiency plans where there are no rem outstanding income and efficiency items for this committee. All of those have been worked through now. So next year we'll be looking to put together a, a new income and efficiency plan. But as things stand, recommendation 1.2 is, is, is a standard. There are no, unless any members uh, want to bring forward any, any proposals for efficiencies or income changes tonight, then uh, we'll see that standard. Next uh, two recommendations are around the capital programme future projects. I have not received any indications that uh, the, the capital or any items in the capital programme should be reduced, but the budget does include some items for additions to the capital programme, which I'll come on to in and also to take any, uh, consider any revenue proposals which have come forward. And I'm very grateful to members who have brought forward these proposals in advance of the committee. So we've had a chance to put in some details around them and give a little bit more information. And they're, they're tabled uh, now or at the Policy and Resources Committee. So I'm grateful for that. And again, I'll talk through those in a, in a... Um, The final record. setting aside some funds for economic development uh, for a skills officer post since then the um, skills officer has handed in their notice and so we are looking to perhaps reshape that slightly so I'm asking for a recommendation just to change the emphasis on that post to give us a little bit more room to fit it into the restructuring if I can then uh, with your permission chair just take us through to the proposals that have been received to date the revenue ones that are set out at paragraph 4.6 uh, four of which were already previously agreed at the previous committee and have gone through to policy and resources and have already been included or will be included in next year's budget. I've put them in here just for the record to show the, the scope of proposing. Uh, and then we've received three new ones. One we've had a separate report on this evening about the extension to the Queen's Platinum Jubilee celebrations. The second item is an item around a uh, drink spiking campaign, which is being run or led by Worcester Bid, hence it's come to this committee rather than communities. And there is more detail on that in an annex to the report. Um, I think Councillor Carver put forward this proposal so we could potentially say more about it. And then thirdly, a proposal to uh, set aside an implementation funds just to, to, to help support the cultural strategy. That is due at the next committee, I think, Helen will be coming along before long, but we just wanted to make sure that we'd built into the budget some consideration for seed corn funding or, or, or opportunities which might arise or some actions which might be needed the, in the implementation of the cultural strategy. So that's just putting it into the budget cycle. Members will receive in more detail. And then finally on this section, I'd just uh, refer to a, a couple of capital items that we've had. Now, capital items can come forward at any stage. But they, they, they won't have a revenue impact in the first year because, as, as members will be aware, there is no minimum revenue provision to pay in the first year and any borrowing, etc., is likely to arise in, in subsequent years. So, but they can be added into the capital programme as long as we have sufficient detail about timing and, and budget which are required. We've received, uh, through the Chair, um, three items. One is in respect of a BMX pump track proposal uh, St. Peter's area, uh, of which a proposed cost in the region of £62,000 have been put forward. The second is in respect of uh, developments in uh, of a, of a, a parcel of land off Cotswold Way, which is designed to bring an unused strip of land into use. Uh, um, potentially, we'll be able to say a little bit more about that one too. And the third is in respect of a, this is a request received from St. Peter's Parish Council via to, to develop an. Uh, 
Arizona Power Plant. I have a little bit more details on that one. Members would want to hear that, but I just stress that's a request for a third party. There is a wider uh, strategic player error assessment that is underway, so these will be part of the consideration around that. But they'll be brought forward to committee consideration now, potential inclusion into the capital. A bit more detail. So those are the items which so far we've received. If there are any further items that members want to bring forward, now's the, now's the time to do it. And um, they could be added in as a, um, a, uh, an addition to recommendation 1.4. Happy to take any further questions or, or provide any further details. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Shane. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, going back on what we said about the Platinum Jubilee, Great opportunity with the Commonwealth Games, of course. Commonwealth is a very important uh, institution, and, and being, being so, it's taking place so nearby. And of course, we have events taking place in the city as well. I think it's a great opportunity to, to combine the two. So I'm fully supportive of, of proposals there. Obviously, apologies for, uh, if you've heard it before, but to colleagues who sit on the Communities Committee, I have a particular interest in, in, in the concerns around drink spiking. Um, I, I raised this at a previous communities meeting. I'm pleased to have put this proposal forward, and I hope colleagues are able to support me in this initiative. I think the nighttime economy is most important to the city of Worcester, and I think the, the safety of citizens and visitors is, is equally important. Um, but, you know, the, the big campaign is very good, and it deserves as much support as possible. And I hope we're able to encourage people to feel safe and actually be aware that there is unfortunately Unfortunately, it's cancer of drink spiking, which, ha which is becoming more frequent, regrettably. Um, and it affects people in all communities. You know, a, a gay friend of mine in the gay community in London, unfortunately, was a victim of drink spiking and was raped uh, a couple of years ago. So it's not a new initiative, and it's not just about protecting young ladies. It's about protecting everybody. Um, men, can be, uh, men, men can be spiked and, and you know, basically be mugged, um, as well as the obvious concerns about sexual offences taking place. I think it's very, very important that, that, that we get behind this campaign and actually not just raise what's going on, but actually there's an education programme in it where we can encourage other, other people out and about to look for the telltale signs and actually, actually see if alarm bells are being raised. So, you know, in many ways helps to everybody out to feel a bit more collegiate and, and be looking out for each other. So I hope colleagues are able, able to get behind that. And that's all I really want to say on this matter. Thank you. Um, thank you for saying all that, Jim, because um, I would support that. I don't know how many people saw the, the award-winning series, I May Destroy You, which was all about drink spiking. And um, uh, I'm pleased to hear you say that there would be an element of education in that. Because it's not just prevention, it's education and educating people that, you know, really that is not uh, the sort of behaviour that we want in this city or anywhere in this, anywhere in the world, actually. Um, I'd like to comment on the um, 4.10, the proposals there um, for an, uh, the land of Cotswold Way and the Power Park play equipment. Because as Shane rightly pointed out, there is a play area review going on at the moment. And as I understand it, that review is going to look at the city as a whole, at where there are play areas, where those play areas may need renovating, um, where uh, it would be useful to have new play areas because of the number of people who live near an area and where there is no provision. Um, and the whole, the whole review will look at the city as a whole, rather than at this stage picking up pieces of land um, which might be uh, a good place to put a new play area. I'm not saying that these two proposals won't eventually uh, go forward, but what I'm saying is at this moment, I think that it's premature to actually start awarding money when we haven't looked at the play area review and we're not in a position to, to look at play areas in the city as a whole. Now, as I understand it, officers are about to bring that um, to the next uh, PED committee, though so we would be in a position there to look at the review 
and to look at um, what play provision we do have and where we need more, where we need new play provision and where the existing play provision does need to be improved. So I think those two bids at this point in time are premature. I'm not saying that, you know, eventually we won't think they're a good idea, but not at this point before the play area review is brought to this committee. Okay. Alan. Yes, thank you, Chair. It's really just um, <coughs> a bit of clarification on the Commonwealth Games 30,000 to, pr to promote them. Um, I would just like a bit more information on what we're actually going to do, because this is clearly an international event, and I would expect the government, the central government, to be promoting this. So what, 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 it, what is our role in the 30,000? Um, I mean, to be blunt, because people are very, very tight with money at these current time, um, they want to know what are they going to get out of it? I mean, what, what are they... What are they promoting and what are they going to receive as a result of spending this considerable amount of money? I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, I've uh, even booked loads and loads of tickets. So I certainly am looking forward to it. But Helen, perhaps you can um, fill in the details. We're not in a position to confirm all the details at the moment. We're formulating plans um, and um, we should be able to update on that. Yes, I'm not saying against the Commonwealth Games. I mean, I'm sure they're a very good thing. Uh, and and I, I may, may even go to someone, who knows? Um, but the point is, we've, we've put in a, a, a large amount of money, and, and what you seem to be saying now is that we don't know how we're going to spend it. Um, seems a cockeyed way of doing it. Surely we identify a need, and then we find the money to pay for it, rather than put some money in and say, well, we'll, we'll now think of how to spend it. It's just that it, it is a lot of money. Um, and because it's an international event, um, all sorts of people across the country, across the world, will be promoting them. So I'm just wondering what, what we're going to get out of it. Frankie, Shane. Thank you, Jet. And I was just, uh, just to remind the committee that this was uh, covered in detail at the previous um, committee, the previous committee meetings. There was a report there on, on what was, and it was recognised that at this stage, uh, certain things, I think we, there was a limit as to what we could say in public because there was some moratorium on that. So there was still some detail to be worked up, but there were a number of items which were included in general at the previous committee. So we can, we can circulate that again after the meeting if, if I understand where we are with the, with the process. We'll bring forward more details in due course. Yes, well, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of half happy with that, but I'm not quite sure what the... What, what the secrecy or the, or the moratorium's about. I don't understand that. Birmingham. And um, certainly in Worcester, we perhaps would like to spend money on things like um, games with sort of local games and that sort of thing and things like that. And as we said, we, we physically can't Unless we can go into private session, we physically can't say exactly what's what. Do you agree? Uh, that's my, my understanding. That there were certain restrictions in terms of publicity. I don't know what the current state of that is, but we will, we will look to bring more information to members. And we can present more perhaps at the Policy and Resources Committee if this item is put forward to go through then more information in there potentially. well clearly i'm sure the meeting wants to move on but i'm just a bit um to say surprised that a, a, a simple question about how we're going to spend the money is now confidential and we have to go into private session i don't quite know what's going on but perhaps some, somebody can tell me secretly then what, what how we're going to spend the money uh, James. Chair, yeah, thank you. Uh, just a quick comment, if I may, uh, going back to, to Cotswold Way. Now, I'm, I'm perfectly happy for a review to take place in terms of play provision around the city. I'd be alarmed, quite frankly, if the conclusion of that review wasn't that the area 
that is adjacent to the Cotswold Way site isn't urgently in need of that kind of investment on, on play facilities. Uh, there are a number of uh, both present councillors for the area in the room and, and even a former one who know only too well that th this area hasn't had th that level of investment. Councillor Cleary has led on this uh, for a number of months now and he's to be commended for this initiative. I would be very much in favour of that and as I say, what the review I would strongly suspect would come out in support of this recommendation. Um, uh, Owen. Thanks, Chair. I just wanted to say a few words about the proposal um, at Cotswolds Way. Um, the, the land in question um, is essentially unused to a greater extent. Um, a proportion of it was set aside for a playground many years ago that never got built. Um, and the, the, th the thrust of the proposal is the uh, creation of a children's playground, low-level children's playground, um, with the development of the green space around it. Which at the moment is nothing more than a lawn mowed to within an inch of its life. Um, it isn't really used for anything. It's not really usable for kids to play football on because it's not flat. Um, and I think we're pushing an open door with this one. It's got the support of the residents. The land was already set aside for a playground. Um, and we've got a fantastic um, environmental and tree team here in the council um, that can help with the beautification of the area. Um, and we've also got the support of the local nature groups to um, the biodiversity of that area. A good seven or 800 yards long and about 200 yards wide. Correct, I think Pat was before. Oh, sorry, Pat. Adrian, and thank you, Chair. Um, a couple of things I wanted to say, really. I, I still think that the the, these pleas for money for play areas is a little premature. Um, you say that you you feel fairly sure that the uh, the play area strategy will approve of it, but we have yet to have the evidence, and I think we need the evidence if we're going to, if we're going to spend money. Um, so I would say let's wait for the evidence. I have no objection to spending money if the evidence says so, but I do think we need it to be solidly based, especially when we have a 1.7 million pound funding gap. So I, I would urge caution there. Drink spiking, um, I think this is an excellent initiative. But looking at the, uh, the annex, and, and I say this particularly to Jim because I, I believe this is your initiative as much as anyone's, um, I see that the, the training and education is focused on uh, club staff and, and bar staff and stuff like that. And I, I think there really ought to be room in the education a se uh, section of, of this initiative to, um, to educate young people generally about staying safe and I think that really needs to happen in schools, colleges, university and that our community education, our community safety officers need to be involved in that very heavily. So I'd like to see that happen. Um. Yes, just, just let them go. And then, but I think um, Anne Nichols actually wrote the report. Yes. Adrian. Yeah. Adrian. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, just two things, I think. One, one is, um, Jane made it clear that, that capital bids can be more yeah, So I, I don't think there's any need to rush into 4.10 at the moment. Um, but, uh, and, uh, and, the, and the advantage of that is that we bear it in mind and feed those into that wider strategy. So you know, we could agree tonight, for example, to put all those three into that wider strategy review um, as, a, as a step forward. But there is a, a material revenue impact of all these um, because all these um, play areas have um, revenue implications in terms of maintenance. And if if these three are going to be added to that, although it might not be an issue for this year, it will be an issue for future years. And that would certainly be an element of the strategic review of the play areas um, in general. So uh, it seems um, daft really to commit X amount of money already to new ones when we still don't know how much we're able to spend on existing ones to improve those. So um, and I would suggest that we, we, we part 4.10, put those three areas into the wider strategy. Um, and, uh, and, and 
you know, we've we've had discussions before about um, state parks and, and where is the most appropriate place to have them. I'm not aware that we've had a review that's decided that St Peter's is the best place to have a skate park. The other point I was going to make was about the Commonwealth Games, really, and I just wanted to check um, that presumably if the full 30,000 um, is not spent on activities associated with the Games, then uh, it's simply not spent. It goes back into the, pot, uh, the council pot, so it's not so we have to spend 30,000 if we don't. Uh, through you, Chair, uh, it is our normal practice that where we have set aside budget for particular activities, if it's not spent up, then that particular be reused for other things, specifically as where, where it's something one of the games. Just for members' benefit, if I could just have had an opportunity just to pick up what was in the previous report. So the list of things which are considered for spending are promotion of opportunities to local business organisations, so promotional work, marketing, Encouraging the community to get involved with the Games cultural programme, so that might be grants and so on. Engagement with the West Midlands Growth Hub to identify tourism opportunities for the city. Development of key messaging and active living, health and wellbeing, and exercise, freedom, leisure, sporting, sporting facilities, their application, training venue. So it was a range of support and activity. It was designed to be um, seed corn funding or match funding. The moratorium I was talking about was in relation to uh, the <laughs> flame. Joe, oh, sorry. Thank you. Uh, the point I wanted to add, Adrian has just made, uh, with this capital spending, it doesn't have to be done uh, in the budget process. Um, and uh, the last time I spoke to an officer about the play area review, it was made quite clear that the provision of play areas isn't, uh, isn't coincidal with the budget process. So when the play area review does come back to us and we decide where the areas in the city are that are where play is most needed and where improvement and new play areas are most needed, then we will be able to uh, actually allocate money to do it then at whatever stage it is in the budget process. £100,000 is a lot of money. Um, when, when the review comes back to us, it may be that £100,000 is all we're allocated for the whole of the play areas in the city. I don't know. I, I mean, until we see where improvement is needed, we can't talk about sums of money. But to actually say that we're going to allocate that much money at this stage before we know, before we've been informed uh, by officers in a review, um, about the whole provision in the city. I think it's, it's premature. Uh, that doesn't mean to say that I'm against this, and it doesn't mean to say that in the end we may not build um, a play area on this piece of land, which I, I know uh, where it is, and uh, yeah, it, it, it would be ideal for a play area. But um, this at this stage, before we see the review, this is not the right point in time to allocate £100,000 um, to Cotswold Way or £12,000 or to, to the uh, power park play equipment. Uh, and I'm not sure about the 60000 to the BMX pump track. While I do support that, like Adrian said, I'm not sure that St Peter's is the right part of the put that in. So I just think that we need to put those three things aside until we can see what the provision is already in the city and then decide whether those are the three most important things that we would like to allocate money to. Yeah. I'd speak in favour of all of those items. I think empty sensible set of proposals I really welcome the dream. Put that message out that we safe night time during the night yeah, we need to support that, that sector and uh, I think I've spoken about on the particular capital it is important priorities those are sensible 
great, great environmental growing city. So I don't think we hold back. Of course, look at the wider play areas. We'll look at the open. But I don't think that should hold back on investments. Certainly in terms of the BMX, all the way we've gone. There have been demands. Skateboard environment, which growing city evident. I there is a but as with all of this, Any other questions? Robin? Thank you, Chair. Uh, to, just to return to the anti-spiking, that's, that's very important. And I appreciate Anne Nichols wrote the report, but there isn't any mention of people who commit these events. Would it be possible to get some clarification from officers about what education who commit these offences Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. Yeah, really, thanks, Joe, Pat, Robin, and Simon for your kind words of support. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I, I see this. I, 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 in answer to Pat's first question, I, I very much see this as a two pronged approach. And obviously, with regards to, I, I, what I'm, and I will be speaking to Anne about this. I wanted to specifically get feedback from, from colleagues tonight before, before I spoke to Anne. Uh, I've already had a meeting with with the uh, principal at Worcester Sixth Form College, and you know he's very supportive and very very keen on getting getting uh, uh, students at the Sixth Form College involved in this. But as I, I think I indicated in what I said first, Robin, I really I want to look at this in two pronged approach because obviously my wife and I are, are my wife and I are out so, you know an awful lot in Worcester on Saturday. There are a lot of people we see the same faces all the time, and I think people are sort of comfortable in in thinking they know what's going on but I, I think it's very important that we 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 have an education process where we're educating the people as i've said what the danger sites are to look out for and i'm, I'm sorry to say i really do think this is this is going to become more of a problem um possibly as we, as we move into the summer we're seeing the trend unfortunately only going in one direction um so Yes, it's work in progress, but you know, absolutely. I, you know, I see education, of course, through schools, but of course, you know, at schools, schools are a bit younger. Once we get to sixth form college, you now we're on the, we're on the cusp of, of going out. Um, probably some are going out and shouldn't be. I know, I know what I was doing when I was at, when I was at college. Um, but I, you know, I very much I see the emphasis on on actually education of, of the warning signs for for drinkers and, and people. Are out enjoying enjoying the nightlife actually just so we can look out for other people. Um, this also obviously um, Jim's bid is is a part of the um, Worcester bid, of which is about um, twenty another twenty thousand, and that's already happening within the city. So it's so yeah. Everything isn't it? You know, if I feel I feel it's perhaps I'm being big-headed. I think I feel it's a good idea. But having if we're going to invest twenty k and we can, if if full council can approve this, I think the extra ten can actually go a lot further rather than sort of just sort of throwing a smaller amount of money. I think we can achieve that much more if we were able to increase the budget. If colleagues agreed at full council, if we were able to increase that budget by a third. 
Right. Okay. Thank you. So we go to the recommendation. So um, the, the committee notes the proposed budgets for the various services identified in 2022-23. That that the committee considers the priorities within each service and recommends any changes for the bud for the services budgets, including the income and efficiency plans. Um, that the Committee considers the services capital program, including 4.10. Is that correct? Through yeah. you, Chair. So, they, any recommends any changes or additions? So those. So, um, six thousand for the BMX. 100,000 for the land off Cotswold Way and 12,000 for park um, play equipment. And then that the committee reviews any new um, revenue budget proposals from members and makes recommendations to policy and resources. And that the committee redesignates the funding set aside for the skills officer. Now, I think the item one, item 1 1.3 we should take separately. Yep. So perhaps we can um, vote for that one first and then the others. Okay. 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 So, uh, okay. Sorry, so, I, didn't, I didn't catch what's on. I'm happy, Chair, just to formally move the recommendations as set out, including the. Okay. Well, that's contrary to what the Chair suggested. Simon has proposed that we vote on 1.1 to 1.5 yep. altogether. So that's different to what you suggested. As you did agree at that point. So that's chair, vice chair who've agreed to go for 1.3 separate. Well, Councillor Kerity, I think you are pro proposing I, amendment. I propose, I'm not proposing that we take yep. on block the items. Okay. I've got a second. Yep. Okay. And we put it to vote. We see yep. whether the okay. supports it or not. And I think I've got a second of it. Okay. So I think. So, uh, the point of order, Chair, I think, I think what Councillor Kerity did was to propose an amendment to what you had already proposed. I had had a seconder. Are you, the, are, you, are you the chair of the committee chair or not? Yeah. As the chair of the committee, a seconder as the vice chair of the committee, With... and then Councillor Garrity proposed something different. So it is an amendment to what you had already as if proposed. We want an individual vote on If that's what people then that's fine. But, that, but I would have thought. Setting them. No, we're putting forward just. Said we would do, and what I had seconded, and what I'd agreed with you. You and I had proposed that we would vote on 1.3 first. And then before we had a chance to do that, Councillor Geraghty proposed an amendment to that rec recommendation of yours. I didn't actually hear any formal. Um, right, okay. 
if we're going to take one one by one. So, right, the recommendations then, 1.1, 1 .1, that um, the committee notes the proposals, proposed budget for the various um, um, services. So, uh, uh, as I was in favour. Yep. Um, 1.2, that um, the committee considers the priorities um, within each service and recommends any, serv any changes to the service's budgets by um, including the local and efficiency plans. Yep. And then 1.3, that committee um, considers the capital programme and future projects. So those in favour? Those against? Um, that the committee reviews any new um, revenue budget proposals for members and ma makes recommendations to the Policy and Resources Committee. Yes, there were. There were. Um, there were new proposals. Jim, Jim and Jim's big spiking and the cultural strategy. No? No? So those, um, so, um, so those, any review, any new revenue pro pro projects? Yes? Right. And that the committee re re designates the funding set aside for the skills officer to the wider remit of an economic development officer. Thank you. Right. So, Corin, I think we need Corin. Right. Good evening. Hopefully, you can hear me. Yes, good evening, Corin. Right, so this is the South Worcestershire Local Development Scheme. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Um, the, the audio has been cutting out somewhat, so I'm hoping you can hear me okay, but please let me know if uh, you're also having audio problems. Okay, well, at the moment we can hear you. Okay, that's great. Thank you. So this item is the update of the local development scheme for 2021 to 2024. This iteration of the LDS provides an update to certain timetables of the 2021 to 2024 LDS as was produced in October last year. The updates in this LDS principally relates to the Travellers and Travelling Show People Development Plan document. So as per the Planning and Compulsory Purchase Act, uh, 2004 is amended, the local development scheme has two main purposes. Firstly, to inform the public about the preparation and adoption of planning documents, and secondly, to establish and reflect council priorities and to enable work programmes to be set for the preparation of documents. Um, as, as project timetables in, the, in this local development scheme are aligned across the three South Worcestershire authorities, the LDS has been combined to be produced on South Worcester basis for this update. So in terms of the Travellers and Travelling Show People DPD, in accordance with the October 2021 LDS, it was intended for the, the Travellers DPD to go out to public consultation at the Regulation 19 publication stage in January to February of 2022. However, at a meeting of the Joint Advisory Panel on the 17th of November, it was acknowledged that there were insufficient sites within the DPD to meet the identified need, and further consideration was needed. So as a consequence, it is no longer possible to progress the Travellers DPD to the Regulation 19 stage um, in January and February of this year. 
So accordingly, it's been determined that the Travellers DPD will be taken through the committee cycles following Worcester City local elections in May, June this year, with the Regulation 19 public consultation commencing in July and August 2022. Following the Regulation 19, the revised timetable will see the submission of the DPD to the Planning Inspectorate for examination in December with subject to availability of the, of the planning inspectorate examination in March 2023 and following uh, receipt of the inspector's report, um, hopefully adoption in July 2023. Other updates to the LDS uh, for this update relate to the community infrastructure levy, where the uh, LDS states that a review of uh, the community infrastructure levy will be taking place, but with a timetable of work uh, to be established at a future update. Um, this SIL update um, is required to align with evidence-based updates relating to the SWDP review. So the LDS update is available to view under Appendix 1, and the recommendations are as follows. That the committee recommend that council approve the South Worcestershire Local Development Scheme 2021 to 2024, set out Appendix 1, to come into effect from the 1st of March 2022. And that delegated authority is given to the corporate director for planning and governance in consultation with the chair and vice chair of Place and Economic Development Committee to make minor amendments to the LDS prior to publication. Thank you. Okay. Do we have any questions on this? Alan. Yeah, yes, thank you, Chair. It's, it's on the paragraph three, Travellers and Travelling Show People uh, DPD. And it really is paragraph 3.5 is the first question. It says that public consultation uh, will take place July to August 2022. Um, can Mr. Bream actually clarify or confirm what sites are going to be consulted on so this this um item is dealing with the local development scheme which sets out the, the timetable for that dpd the the sites to be uh, included within that are to be determined and will be brought to a future committee once that's been established Right, so 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 we don't know at this stage then. Yeah. Right. In that case, my second question is it refers to paragraph three point three, where part of the delay, well, the actual delay is due to there being insufficient sites. Um, but I recall a, a member's briefing last February, um, where there was a list, and I'm going by it from memory here, so Mr. Brink can correct me if I'm wrong. But there were 13 sites in Malvern Hills which hadn't been activated. So I'm just a bit surprised that there are insufficient sites. Um, can again, can you help us on that? Because um, obviously the thrust of my question is, uh, are they or will they be looking at any sites in Worcester City? Because there was some confusion about that at the briefing last February, where a site was put forward the officers didn't know whether it was in Malvern Hills or Worcester City. They then said, well, it was actually in Malvern Hills, only for us to discover the following day that it was actually in Worcester City. So I'm just a bit concerned that they do know what sites they're talking about and we're not suddenly confronted with a new site that um, appears at the last minute. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, again, the sites, uh, we're working with our, our neighbouring authorities and colleagues at, at Worcester, um, which are in Malvern Hills, and the sites to be included within the DPD are currently being looked at and considered um, and will be brought to a future committee once that has been established. Thank you, Major. Well, final question then just, um, well, can there, Mr. Uh, Brin can confirm that um, a site on Broomhall Way is or is not included? Oh, sorry, Sean. Don't know if you want to take that one with your hands up. Through you, Chair. <clears throat> Good evening, members. I'm, I'm sorry to be joining uh, remotely. Uh, it's unavoidable this evening. Um, 
Councillor Ramos, um, it is difficult for um, Corin to answer your question any further than he has done in relation to tonight. The document is a draft, sites are under discussion, um, and it's absolutely a matter for members to decide which sites are allocated in the DPD document, and I can give you that assurance, Councillor Amos. And, and that because the, the work is still underway, that's as far as we can take that at that point tonight. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Well, that, that, that's fine. But when you say the members will decide, I mean, that's obviously satisfactory. Uh, but, but which members? We're talking about three authorities here. And so is it the case that uh, Witchhaven and Malvern Hills members will decide at JAP, for example, whether there's a site being put forward from Worcester City or, or how does that work? Which members are going to decide on which sites come from Worcester City? Through you, Chair, if I may. So the, the joint advisory panel is indeed that. It's, a jo it's an advisory panel. Uh, the Place and Economic Development Committee at Worcester City Council and the equivalent committees at Malvern and Witchhaven will decide on the sites in the DPD. Uh, and the PED committee at this council will, um, if it supports officer recommendations, will recommend a draft DPD document with a set of sites in it to full council. So all three councils, committees at all three councils, will be in control of the destiny of which sites are in the plan overall. Everybody will vote on all of it. Right, so sorry, the final point will be, uh, so, so that means then, for example, uh, Worcester City members have control over which sites are being proposed for Worcester City. That's correct, Councillor Ramos. Just a very minor point, Chair, and it's just a point of clarification because I think it's a typo, but on page 39 at the top, uh, there's a series of dates, and the date quoted for the independent examination um, of the um, SWDP review uh, looks to be a year out of date, so uh, February 2. It's important that the dates are important because obviously it's a, it's a key document. If it's a typo, I think we should just note it and change it. Page 39. Yeah, it's under 3A because it's setting out key milestones that we're agreeing as a council as part of our consultation document. We've got to make sure it's right. So if we're putting submission to the independent spectra in November 2022, then they won't be having an independent ex examination earlier that year because they won't have the submission at that stage. So I'm just checking that the date needs changing. It should be 23, I'm suggesting the independent examination, but I'm just confirming that or not. The report says one thing and 3A says another thing. I'm just trying to flush out, Chair, because these things get reported upon and then therefore they're, they need to be accurate. Corinne, have you found the page reference? No, I'm, I'm struggling to find a, a 3A um, based on the, the committee report I'm looking at. Page 28 says the revised cap, the, the reside, reside timetable, right? And then page 39, milestones, it's, it's, there's another. I, I've, I've clicked through the link from the, the, webs, the website, so I don't have the page numbers to refer to, so I'm, I'm, I'm not seeing what you're describing, I'm afraid. Do you have a paragraph number of the committee report? Or is it the... It's 3.5 for, for the committee report. Are we looking at the appendix, the actual LDS? Sorry? Are we, are we looking at the actual report of the, the local development scheme? <laughs> We're looking at a conflict, and why I'm raising it, Chair, is because it can create uncertainty. Yeah. No, apologies. I have, I have, yes, I found it now in, in, the, in the local, yes, we'll get that rectified. It should say 2023. Right. Yes, apologies. Okay, are there any questions, any more questions? Jim, 
Yeah, I'll just make a quick point. Um, as a Romani chow, I'm, I'm quite quite content that this is this is dealt with after the election. Um, just one comment, it's, and it's a gripe I've been making for years, and it's nothing that anybody can do about it. Is that is the way um, travellers are treated the same as show people? You know, travellers, Irish travellers, Romani gypsies, sh show people. We're all very different people, uh, and the needs of a showman will be very different to the needs of a traveller. I mean, that's that's something that maybe should be considered at committee at planning by planning committees, but the needs of a of a showman is very, very different to the needs needs of of, of a traveller living on a site with regards to space and with their machinery, that sort of thing. It's just a gripe of mine that you know, Irish travellers are very different to Roman gypsies, but these are the rules that are made and how you've got to work with them. But I'll just ask colleagues, city colleagues who sit on planning committees to understand that. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Perhaps I can help a little here. Um, one of the things that travelling show people will need is a large amount of hard standing for their equipment. So the, the, the JAP um, panel is well aware of the differences between the different communities. Any other comments? So, Corin, will you make sure you you make that amendment? Yes, we'll get that fixed in the in the LDS. Okay. So, the rec the committee recommends that council approves the South Worcestershire Development Scheme 2021-24. Sorry, um, set out at Appendix One, coming to effect on the first of March and the delegated authority is given to the corporate director planning and governance in consultation with the chair and vice chair of place and economic development committee to make minor amendments to the lsd prior to publication all in favor thank you and um Corin, are you presenting this or becky the um, infrastructure funding. I, I believe it's Becky for the next item. Okay. Yes, good, good evening, Chair. Can you hear me? Yes. Good evening, Chair. Good evening, councillors. Um, <clears throat> this item is the infrastructure funding statement. Um, the recommendation is that members note that the 2021 version of the infrastructure funding statement has been published on the council's website. Um, this is in accordance with the regulations and it's now available for both the public and members to view it online. It the document covers the monitoring period of the 1st of April 2020 to the 31st of March 2021. Um, this is the second time we've now published and been required to publish an infrastructure funding statement. Um, the first time was, was last year. Uh, the details um, of an infrastructure funding statement are that it must contain um, the income and expenditure relating to both community infrastructure levy, still, and also section 106 agreement. So it's required um, to set out the number of agreements that have been entered into during a monitoring period, the amount of money the council's received, what funds we've allocated to any projects during that year, and what funds we've spent within that monitoring year. The main um, purpose really of the IFS is to improve transparency and also to increase accountability of the money received by the council and obviously subsequently spent. So hopefully it'll help to increase the public's understanding and awareness of, of developer contributions um, and what's been received and the types of infrastructure and facilities that we've invested in. Um, we should also use it to set out some of our future spending priorities on infrastructure and, and affordable housing and um, to align it with our up to date emerging policies. Um, <clears throat> just as a really brief summary in terms of um, the document itself, um, obviously you, you've probably ha had a look through this, but in terms of the key um, figures from the last financial year. At Worcester City, we didn't collect any um, SIL, any community infrastructure levy during the monitoring period, but 528,000 was collected by Mulvan and Witchhaven District Councils. 
And we now have a collective West South Worcestershire pot of about 2.2 million pounds worth of sill. Um, we're currently working as um, South Worcestershire officers um, on a governance agre agreement and arrangement, which we're, we will be putting in place over the next few months, which will set out how we allocate and spend this money. And we will be updating members in due course and also this um, version of the infrastructure funding statement. In terms of section 106 agreements, um, the council during the monitoring period entered into 11 new agreements um, with developers and or landowners. Um, not all of those have got financial obligations associated with them, um, but uh, the majority relate to providing a range of either financial contributions towards open space, education, highways and transport, um, which obviously would go the latter going across to the county council. Um, in terms of the amount of money that we actually received in the monitoring period, that was £108,444 was collected from Section 106 contributions. Um, this was slightly less than the preceding year, possibly due to the impact of the pandemic. Um, and then in terms of our expenditure during that year, that was also slightly less at £105,904. Um, and that was spent primarily on the maintenance of public open space and improvements to the public realm um, and also improvements to open space. Um, we have an amount of money that sits um, within uh, that we've already collected and um, is to be allocated to particular funds and projects, um, £534,000 approximately, which we have already identified projects for, um, and we have a further £78,000 set aside for longer term maintenance of some of the um, public open space schemes, um, which we collect as a commuted sum. Um, we do have a remaining balance of £191,000 thousand pounds which remains unallocated to a specific scheme but it is restricted by the um by the content and the terms of the um of the section 106 agreement for example the section 106 agreement might stipulate that it has to be spent on open space etc um but that overall is a summary of of what the document really contains it's it's an important document that is now required by the legislation um, and the intention is um, for us to be more transparent about about the monies we receive collect and spend um, I'll, i'm happy to take any questions if you may if you may have any questions on this simon I welcome the document, Chair. I think it's a, um, a good addition in terms of transparency, particularly as there's always concerns about um, uh, sums that the Council legitimately receives through different purposes and how they're spent. So I think this level of openness and welcomed. And there's a lot of detail in here, which I'm sure we'll reflect on. I just had one question that surprised me, which was on page 60, uh, there are two developments in this development area. One, they're both exactly the same, actually, the creation of student residences. Uh, one at uh, the YMCA hostel, which is a conversion, one in Hamilton Road. The, the, the purpose of the question is they're treated differently because of the relief status. And I just wanted to confirm that uh, the University of Worcester does, does a benefit from charitable status. It wasn't something I was aware of before, but uh, it's uh, useful to know for the future. The other one doesn't, and uh, people would reflect on them being very similar developments, student accommodation, same kind of class, uh, usage. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, but one will generate a significant addressing those challenges, and one won't. Yeah, um, it's basically down to um, yeah whether they're a registered charity or not that are taking forward the scheme and developing that. And it's my understanding that um, whenever um, uh, we look to collect sill, or if it's a sill. Um, if, it, if it's a type of development that, that is required to contribute towards SIL, which in Worcester City, we only collect SIL on student accommodation and certain types of retail um, food store, um, they then can fill in an exemption form. And if they are a registered charity, then yes, you're right, they, they, are, they do benefit from exemption. And this particular development um, by the university is exempt. Thanks for the clarification. I think it's a useful clarification because so little actually contributes to SIL. So this is another uh, thing that I don't think we probably appreciate when setting the policy years ago, but uh, it's useful reflection for the future.
Yeah. I, th I think there is a review of still in the next the next year as part of the SWDP review. So, any other questions? So, um, if we note that the two. 2021 version of the infrastructure funding statement has been publicised on the um, council's website, and perhaps members, perhaps perhaps it might be, um, Margaret, perhaps mem members could be maybe um, in in their briefing. We could maybe get members to have a look. Okay. So, uh, so noting, so that's it. So um, quarter three performance. Thanks, Shane. Thank you, Chair. Just in general to, uh, to introduce the report, this is our regular uh, performance report for quarter, to quarter three. Um, pleasing to note, most of the indicators are green or amber. There are a few red ones. There, are, there is significant detail which is provided in the notes around the process where we're going through clearing out a backlog, a significant backlog in, in planning applications having an effect on the indicators there. It's anticipated, as noted, that once that process is complete, we should re restore the performance of the service to its uh, previous position, um, which would be green against those indicators. And then any other red one which is showing is visitors to city museums, which I think the note uh, suggests uh, was to do with the um, uh, con concern over the Omicron variant as it was beginning to develop during the latter part of the year. So those are the only ones which are showing in red. Um, I'm not terribly well versed in the detail, but if there are any questions, I'm happy to, um, to, to look for other officers, possibly on Zoom, to come back with some answers or potentially come back with members subsequent to the committee. Thank you. Pat and myself um, attended a workshop on Friday and um, um, that, that we were given reassurances that uh, um, it was just a blip and uh, mem, mem, um, that uh, um, visitors to the um, museums are now... Right, Simon. Two questions really. One noting the planning performance of what changed just said. And I don't know whether there's any further reassurance you could gain if you were to look at the current performance. There is a significant deterioration of the issues about that. But I think further reassurance. Many applications are individuals. I don't know what the quantity of applications for small applications within eight weeks, how many applications a noticeable decline. The other one was about the five-year land supply, because significant deterioration in that. So whether that's in relation to how it's calculated, whether the changes in just above the five-year land supply. Benefit of successful arrangement across Southwest that's made sure that um, local members determine where it might to come forward, and we want to serve and protect that into the future. Through you, Chair, if I may. <clears throat> Chair, may I say that the audio was um, was quite difficult then. I, I couldn't hear a great deal of what Councillor Geraghty said, but perhaps I, could, I, I do understand the, 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 the nature of the questions. Um, and if I can propose to provide some answers and then if it's helpful, I could provide a more detailed written briefing um, after the meeting. Um, in relation to the first question about um, looking for some assurance, I think Councillor Garrity is saying um, that planning performance is moving in the right direction, bearing in mind the significant dip on the figures. Um, what I would want to say is that um, the figures are looking particularly depleted because we're tackling the backlog um, and the nature of tackling the backlog means that um, you know, information is coming to light about how long um, some applicants have been waiting for decisions from the council. 
and I know that um, councillors tonight share my view and the view of the managing director that that backlog is unacceptable and the delays have been unacceptable, which is why a number of significant changes um, have been put in place to, uh, to correct that situation. Um, <clears throat> but specifically what that means in terms of reporting data is that where an application has been in the council's books for longer than the statutory consultation periods, and there's no extension of time agreed or nothing that really uh, that, that we now in terms of how we're reporting to you feel is is a credible explanation we're reporting that as a delay and as those applications now come forward if you like to the top of the pile they're prioritized and they're dealt with and applications are either determined or refused um, we're having to report to you now how long those applications have been sitting on the stocks so just in the interest of full transparency that's exactly why the data has dipped I'm, I'm forgive me if that was already understood but as I said the the audio isn't great so I'm just trying to pick up on the on the gist um, but moving forward on that, what I would say from a point of reassurance, Councillor Geraghty, is that we are our planning performance is is above where it needs to be in terms of uh, national measures. Um, and what will be coming to this committee is a fresh way of reporting in time for the next committee cycle, where we're reporting against the national indices of timescales for majors and minors and so forth. Um, and the colleagues who've joined us at the moment on an interim basis and our new head of service who's arriving shortly, um, all agree that the way that performance figures have been reported to you previously um, could be improved um, and give you better data. And we're clear what that will look like. So I can reassure you that we're not at risk of entering special measures. I can reassure you that applicants who've been waiting a long time are now receiving the attention they deserve. Um, and I can reassure you that we've put significant staffing resources in place on an interim and a permanent basis to address this situation. <clears throat> Forgive me. So that, that would be my response on that first point. Um, but as I say, bearing in mind the constraints around this setup tonight, I'd be happy to provide a more detailed briefing if that would assist. And on that second point about the five year housing land supply, again, the situation there is we do have a five year housing land supply. Um, it's of benefit to all three councils that we assess our five year housing land supply on a South Worcestershire basis now. Um, and uh, we, we presented to this committee previously, I think probably two committee meetings ago, um, a paper that explained the five year housing land supply and the basis upon which it being calculated. So we are satisfied that that is a, a robust position that we can rely on. So much a question, Chair, just to reassure Councillor Geraghty that officers and, and planning councillors are worth it working their socks off to try and get this backlog down. And we do have an extra meeting, you know, at the beginning of February as well uh, as part of that effort. But we have done a lot of extra work. No, I just thank people for both uh, officer and, uh, and member comments. I just think as a performance committee, we couldn't let it go without asking those questions and just commenting on them. So, important to, to I think, performance is. Okay. So, um, we note the um, council's um, quarter three performance. I don't think there's any other business, so uh, thank you very much.